Good morning, Booktube, YouTube. This is Johnny. Hope you're all doing well out there in the world. Here in West Michigan, it is snowing and cold. It's nine degrees outside this morning. It is a Sunday morning here in West Michigan. It is 8.51 in the morning. It is November the 20th. And according to my calendar, we have 41 more days before we come to the end of the year 2022. So yeah, it's like this is a Sunday morning, as I've said before in the past. My wife went to church and she has to set up for coffee before Sunday school and then she has to take down coffee. Somebody helps her. One of the women at church helps her. And then they have communion today, so she won't get home until 12.30 today. And then we go down the street and uh, we have dinner with our son. We're having a Thanksgiving dinner because next week when there's Thanksgiving, our oldest son and his family will be visiting his wife's family up uh, east of us up by Detroit, Michigan. So we'll have an early Thanksgiving with our oldest son. He's cooking the meal, so my wife is just bringing, bringing pumpkin bars. So I'm sitting here, as my habit is, writing in my November 22 diary. This morning I'm on page 1084. For the year 2022, I usually write around 1,000, 1,100, sometimes 1,200 pages a year. Now remember, I, when I write, I use a, a double rule. I don't use college rule. I use double rule because I like space, I suppose. So I'm writing in my diary. Oh, there's one thing I, I was going to mention. In my last video, uh, I tend to make, at the end of a video, comments that just come to me out of the blue air, out of, and I was mentioning the, the Great Apostasy, and maybe some people out there in the world don't know what the Great Apostasy is. It's, a, it's found in the Bible, and I was thinking about that because when I look around like this morning, I woke up and I read on the news that somebody in Colorado Springs walked into uh, an LBJ uh, bar and killed five people, just shot them and injured 16 or 18 people. And then there was those students in Idaho that were stabbed to death, four students. And then there was that guy who walked onto a bus, the, the University of Virginia, and killed, and in, killed three young men, and then he injured and shot other people. And so it's like you look at this world, and not only that, but you look at the how the Russians have invaded and started a war in Ukraine, and you look at North Korea shooting missiles towards Japan and South Korea. And you look at the rising uh, military might of China, and you look at the homelessness here in America, the, the opiate epidemic, and you look at our political, our po politics. Everybody wants political power, but there's no concern for people, the poor, or justice, or righteousness. And so you, you look at this country in this world and you say well, something is wrong well in the bible it's called the, the great apostasy that there will be a great falling away and a great increase of wickedness and evil as we come to the end of this age and i was thinking of, of reading the scriptures the first i i didn't read like second timothy and the new testament in the holy bible it says in second timothy chapter 3, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times, 
uh, times of stress will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to, the, to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haunty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households, make captives of gullible women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts, always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And then it goes, also it's found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, which is also in the New Testament. It says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and this is, you have up here called the Great Apostasy. Chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, to, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us as though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do, not be, do, do you not remember that when I was still with you, this is the Apostle Paul, I told you that these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken, away, taken out of the way. And when the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming, and the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteousness, deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them a strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure and unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth to which he called you by, your, by our gospel for obtaining of the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by our epistle. Now may the Lord Jesus Christ himself our, and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. So those kinds of verses kind of I keep in my mind when I look at the world around me right now and I wake up in the morning. And like I said, I've said in my previous videos is that uh, you have to every day live a life of prayer, seek God's grace and strength to stand firm in these evil days and not become despairing, but that there is a world coming. And that's what I was also th was going to read from Second Peter. It says in Second Peter chapter 3, Beloved, I now write to you second epistle, in whom to which I stir up your pure minds by way of reminders, that you may be mindful of the words which are spoken before by the holy prophets and the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, saying, Where is the promise of his coming?
For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willingly forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water by which the world that then existed perished being flooded with water. There he's referring to the there way back in the Old Testament in Genesis of Noah and the flood. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved by, for fire unto the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you ought to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for and hasting the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. So that's what we do as Christians. We look for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness will dwell. Which righteousness dwells. Be steadfast. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things and be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blemish. So well, that's the, I, rem, I look at the, I read these verses this morning, as I said, when I look at what's going on, our, all the, the murdering and massacring and war and violence and people killing one another, not only with weapons, but with words. I say, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be diligent to be found by him in Jesus Christ, in peace, without in spot and blemish. Consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. So I thought I'd just share with you that when I talk about the great apostasy, the great falling away, the increase increasing of the world and humanity becoming more corrupt and more rebellious, I look at these verses in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and 2 Peter chapter 3. So this is how you have to look at the world when you get your perspective. This is a Christian perspective on this present evil age and that there is a day when the Lord will come in the second coming of Christ and uh, we have to be ready when he comes I think also I think in 2 Thessalonians it, it mentions the second coming of Christ it says uh, if I remember correctly he says There in First Thessalonians chapter 5, But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord also comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction but you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day, that this day, capital day, should overtake you as a thief. You are sons of light and sons of day. We are not of the night or of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep as at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are the, of the day be sober, 
putting on the breastplate of faith and love as a helmet and the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore comfort each other and edify one another, just as you are, are, are also doing. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, as far as, like I said, this is Sunday morning. I've been reading in the mornings. Uh, I've still been reading John Murray's sermons. Oh, D Death, Where Is Thy Sting? Collected Sermons. Yesterday I read his sermon, uh, Be Ye Transformed. Some, most of these sermons are taken from the Epistle of Romans. And the text for this one I read yesterday, Be Transformed. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, by, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So I read that sermon yesterday, and today... I'm, uh, well, next sermon, Sermon 7, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And that knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe, Romans 13, 11. So I've also been reading in the mornings some pastors and teachers reflecting a biblical vision of what every minister is called to be by Sinclair Ferguson. And I'm on, in here, I'm on page 217, chapter 12, John Owen, the great Puritan divine, on the glory of Christ. And i also been reading, uh, well, I got two books in the mail. I mentioned uh, my psychologist gave me this book to read which I read and we talked about in our last session, Chasing the Wind, A Pastor's Life by Douglas J. Brower. I bought my psychologist this book, Encouragement for Today's Pastors, Help from the Puritans by jo J jo Joel R. Beakey and T Terry D. Slackner. So I, get, I bought this book for him. I have it in my library and I thought, my psychologist is a Christian, and and we talk not only about we talk about a lot of things, but we talk about Christianity and the ministry and uh, the Bible and all kinds of things. And uh, encouragement for today's pastor. I also bought when I bought this book from Christian Reformation Heritage Books. I bought this book for myself, A Labor of Love. Puritan Pastoral Priorities by J. Stephen Yoldi. It's slim, it, this is a slim little thing. I didn't have it in my library. I like reading about the pastoral ministry because you all know I went to Bible college and seminary to be a gospel minister, but the Lord had different plans for me. But I still like reading on the pastoral ministry, the teaching elder, I also recommend this book, Puritan Evangelism, A Biblical Approach, by Joel Arbeke. And then uh, the last book I read, a couple, I think I've read this book last year. No, 2015. But this is a good book, too, to read if you're the pastor as a public theologian reclaiming a lost vision by Kevin J. Van Hooser and Owen Strachan. This is a good book too, I recommend. And also this book, Light and Heat, The Puritan View of the Pulpit by Dr. R. Bruce Bickle. These are good books to read if you're interested in the gospel ministry or you're an, an elder, a teaching or ruling elder. Yeah, these are good books to have in your library. And so, also this book I didn't mention, uh, Joel R. Beakey read, uh, wrote Reform Preaching, Proclaiming God's Word 
From the Heart of the Preacher to the Heart of His People by Joel R. Beakey. These are the kind of books I read uh, about the pastoral ministry. Now, one thing else I've been reading in the mornings, I, I, I am still reading Stephen Charnock's two-volume work, The Existence and Attributes of God by Stephen Charnock, the great Puritan divine. This is a new edited edition by Mark Jones. And I'm starting probably this week, chapter 3, on God's being a spirit. And the text is John 4, 24. God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. I'm on page 263 in this book. So I'm reading Stephen Charnock. I'm reading uh, Sinclair Ferguson, the pastor, some pastors and teachers on John Owen and the glory of Christ. And I'm reading the late John Murray, who was a professor of systematics at Westminster Seminary in Philadelphia what, many years ago. But this is his sermons. Of, most of the sermons are on the Epistle of Romans. So that's what I'm reading in the mornings, writing in my diary. We're coming to the end of November 2022, coming to the end of the year 2022. The year 2022. So that's it. I thought I'd just stop by and show you what I'm reading in the morning. I really haven't gone to thrift stores due to the bad weather. I don't like traveling when it's snowing and it's icy. I still go to the book nook. I went to the book nook last Monday and this Friday and there's it was dead. There was nobody in there in the store. I just read and wandered the store until my replacement came. So I hope you had a good last week. I hope you had a good reading weekend. I thank you for your comments. And I'll close the, with these words, these verses in the epistle of Jude, which is just before Revelations. It says, Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, by both now and forever. Amen. With that, I'll close. Have a good reading week. Stay safe. Stay warm. And until next time, bye.